Hi. We're finally back. back. Officially back. What's good? Doing good. And you know who's also having a really good time? Sparta mm -hmm. Mega again. Yep. And so I'm not quite sure if you guys heard that when we talked about it a while ago, but yes, they had a really fantastic time. Uh, really just keeping up with what happened into that SND, turned that loose into a very good win. Zero and three is a scoreline. The donut coming in from just like Omega is very comfortable in this map. We already mentioned that before, and also really good when it comes to the game mode game map combination as well. Yep. And this is the miracles of Smart Omega there. Candy getting the MVP, 23 kills under his name, 8 deaths and 7 assists. While on the contrary, Guitar was able to rock the throw for the team, but wasn't enough. Zero to the tree. It's really, really not the gameplay you would expect to see for WDC free slot. A lot of pride is involved, but it looked like Smart Omega just had a little bit of a better take there or uh, execution for control of summit let's take a look and let's talk about more of our uh, about more about of our mvp omg candy for this one what can you say about candy beef mama candy has been the mvp of the so many times now today and he's been really uh, trying to carry his team into the victory, but obviously it's a whole team effort, but for him, he's really stepping it up. And now lately, especially with the 23 kills and 2,977 points under his bag, he's definitely helping his team out to win up against WDC now, going in for that. That's definitely going to be really important points. That's going to be really important money for them as well if they do bag that third place spot. But we are going into our next matchup, which is going to be map number four, which is Hacienda. And now I am impressed with what I got to see in that Summit control game. That is just no... It was an Omega game, for sure. In takeoff, it was a 50-50 because Omega made a comeback. Firing range, don't throw everyone away. And now for Summit, it's the same case for Omega. 3-0, and o, it's perfect. And now for Hacienda hardpoint... Man, very tricky though, Warden, because you already know that Omega loves this map and playing this game mode is really good. But again, a lot of things can happen in this hardpoint matchup, kind of like what we saw a while ago in Takeoff. A lot of things can happen here, but one thing I'm happy about is that you're not going to be casting this matchups here. Ashenda Slums up next. It's not going to be you, Beef Mama. It's going to be y'all boys. Bravo 6 and Neptune, come again, take it away. <laughs> Well, I could see the tears off of Beef Mommy's eyes, but you know what? It's been a pleasure working with you, Neptune. Finally, I got to work out yeah. with you this cast, but uh, let's not talk about ourselves any longer because in a little while, <laughs> we will be seeing that epic, epic hardpoint matchup. We've been on the air now for over eight and a half hours, and the action still just doesn't cease to start, does, still doesn't cease to stop. Here we go. Big yellow coming in from our feeds and Smart Omega off to a very hot start, off to try and close this game and snatch that third place victory. As they gather up the, all the points right now, 36 seconds on the clock and they have an opportunity to get that full 60 with the second, second floor that they are taking right now. The OBC free slot might not be able to get it back, but as I say that, instantaneously, they just bring back the bacon and a few more points as well. 11 to 24 and still the hard point is on the side of double DC free slot. A little bit blue. They have all covers, but they have been doubting if they want to go for the early rotation or, or take that hard point and take that few seconds will be lost because of that indecision. Hard point identified. Capture the objective. And uh, we're not hearing that much from uh, Bravo 6 at this point. As we continue hard the battle of foot, it is the next hard point right now. 20 to 24 in this game. And um, we are looking forward to what's going to happen in this matchup. It is uh, plenty of kills right now being done. And as we start off this match uh, as we continue on with this match smart omega going in for that catch up game and they are the ones in the lead garage right now will be their target and c1 sees one and takes down two as they try to bounce off the scores 
Whew, I just had to restart my my communications app because of the intensity of the action, Neptune, but it is proving to be still quite intense as we are seeing WDC hold on to the last few seconds of this hard point, but Smart Omega recovering it in the nick of time. No team still going in for early rotations. Scratch that. I think we are going to be seeing a scramble for P number three. One of those points I really, really like seeing in this particular map because it opens up a lot of opportunities for offense, defense, teamwork, and what have you. Three points. Very, very slim lead for Smart Omega. But will this be the deciding factor for them to try and close this game out? Or will they be able to force, or will WDC rather be able to force a game number five? Yeah, it, uh, well, we'll have to find out later on if that is the case. The lead is just going back and forth. The points will go back and forth as well. We'll be right now trying to clear off the area as a warehouse will be taken by a few members from Smart Omega. It is getting tied right now to points and they have 20 or more than 20 seconds to take this lead. But the gang of the DC free slot just takes over the house, the warehouse right mm -hmm. now with C1 as the guard. And this is proving to be quite another one that will be close down to the wire. As we can see now, 67 to 56. WDC with a very, very slim lead. Omega contesting as much as they can. And here we go. Smith over at the top, finding a way to go in for that play. But going back into the map, empty hard point as of the moment. Both teams scrambling to get early rotations, scrambling to get early control. But it will be Omega who will paint this hard point yellow for the first few seconds. Up and they're painting in yellow. Well, they need to paint it not just for the first few seconds, but until the end. Especially if they want to take over this game and finish it that completely. And as you can see, a little bit of a hold off from a double DC right now in entering this compound and this hill because of the security that SM like Smart Omega has been pulling off now in backstab. But it will not be happening just yet because of the graph vortex that has been laid out and still now in got sucked and by risky and i think we lost bravo six once again and we continue on with a battle 80 to 85 the scores right now the dc free slot try to catch up onto the point five seconds to tie it up and no one's budging an inch for double dc the slide goes through and still the timer runs out 83 to 85 the scores at this point, back into that P1 the open area of this first kill will be the dominating factor or of the dominating factor that can uh, change the game of this of, of this hard point. Especially with the second floor being taken by Smart Omega at this point. And if you have control of second floor, you have control of the hill as well because of damage that you can put in to play. It is just a ring around the rosy for some of the teams, especially on that P1 and um, well you are not hearing Bravo 6 earlier from the game this time we're inviting Beef Mommy into the cast what do you mean? I'm still Bravo 6, I just have a voice changer. <laughs> so, again, you know, speaking of changing the tides over here in this game, Smart Omega having the beautiful 103 lead. And obviously, WDC Freeze can still go and take up the points because it's just 13 points in between them. And now the battle for that rotation in Lambo is going to be absolutely key. And now, so far, Omega does have a hold of that rotation as well, not just that, the scrap points too. And now we get to see it. The break coming through from WDC is finally going to happen. But unfortunately for them, the gatekeeping is happening from Omega. Yes, yeah, Smart Omega really have good position at this point. We've seen so many times as we look and in the minimap, we're in. There's plenty of instances where no one is stepping into play, and that happened when Smart Omega just pulled out, probably with the, the rotation and the gatekeeping that they are doing at this point. And Double DC is just at a loss. The spawns really not being taken advantage by Double DC free slot, and it's Smart Omega at this point who's just taking over the range but as we say that they move in towards that small alley towards that small staircase and guitar just clears up the staircase taking two down takes back the garage 
Guitar pulling the right strings to perform really well in the defense here into P2 and the rotation finally comes through from both of these teams and a WDCCI actually doesn't really quite get that kill and that rotation is finally cut off short. And now all they need to do is do the same thing that we were doing a while ago, Capture retake, retake, retake. And now for Omega, the early rotate is actually going to be there. But WDC actually did such a good job at retaking that second hill. And there you go. Such big kills coming in from Omega. And trying to flush up all of the players that are coming in. But Guitar yet again with a big double piece. Now, I mean, this is why I think I'm going to love seeing more of the scenes fight and a hard point in this map because of how it has been going back and forth right now and we're not talk, like, talking about jump teams we're talking about smart omega as well as double dc free slot at this point and rage right now purifier taking only one guy down but yeah 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 in there from above it will not be a difficult task for kenzie to take out and WDC three slots actually going to be spotting off to the left side of the map, which Omega was actually aware of. And it's a good thing that player number two, that's going to be Candy, was situationally aware of what actually happened. So that defense of his actually was a big deal. And now the scrap point still getting by Omega's hands. And the rotation going to the next hill is going to be absolutely key. And now for Omega, they only have, I think, two players going in for that rotate, but they do mm -hmm. have really good spawn control here so far. Yeah. All right. We'll have... Thank you so much, Beef Mommy, for that really, really amazing clutch gameplay right there. My computer died in the middle of this particular battle. We have been on the air for more than eight hours already, and I just want to thank Mommy for that particular save right there. But it is still proving to be quite the powerful gameplay for both sides. We can see both sides really still going into it at this particular point. Yes, indeed. I mean, it's, it's like... It is a long run right now between these two teams. It's not really a complete takeover. It's only this moment that we're seeing a huge thing being taken with Smart Omega. Probably some momentum that they have, as well as position that they are taking to flip the spawns. But as we say that, Double DC is still forcing their way and trying to catch up and points back and forth towards this end. And from the last time that I talked to Jericho, once they reach that 150, it's very difficult really to catch up. But looking at the scores right now, now 150 to 184 it's i would say it's still close it's just one um one good hard point and it might go to double dc's favor yeah you're absolutely right but right now smart omega first dibs on the hard point but i think wdc is gonna go and try and extend that lead and this might be it if wdc holds on to this hard point again that fountain will it be the fountain of life or will it be the fountain of death it's something that we will have to see as wdc closes in on that lead by smart omega and omega better find a way to retake it soon as possible. Here we go, 186 now to 168, and Smart Omega again painting the hill yellow as they try to reach the double century mark as you put it, Neptune. Yeah, and uh, well, uh, regardless of if it's Founder of Death or Final Life, hopefully it will be a found in the points for either team, and that will be taken advantage by Smart Omega at this point. 10 seconds remaining for this hill, and they are reaching, crossing the 200 double century mark, and they just need one good run for the hill, and they will bring this home. But still, the DC will not let that happen, especially in the garage. But Rage right now just burned them up. Goes for the third, and it is mm. all clear. C101 remaining, wow. and Smart Omega takes over. And that is what you call a five bomb. Will it be a six bomb? Not quite yet. But that was really, really big coming in from Rage right now. It bought Omega enough time to try and close this game out. And if Omega holds it, this might be it. This might be the opening that Smart Omega needs to finally take this game, finally get the rest that they need. And this will only be proving to be much more intense as we go in to 239 now, 240, 10 points away from victory. Smart Omega is destined to become the third place finisher for the Gush Cloud Cup Invitational. And there we have it, finishing it off. It is Smart Omega taking win on that hard point. 
And there we have it. Smart Omega, even despite of what happened earlier in the previous battle, they still managed to pull it through, taking the win match after match, and they are still alive, but not so much in the top, but still, their position on that third is still well for them. Anyone from the these teams will take that, but as we give up, as we end that battle, we are going to throw it off to our anchors right now to give us a little bit more of insights of what happened. Beef Mommy, let's welcome you back as well as the Warden. Well, hello, hello. Uh, I am finally being the anchor yet again. I did have a little bit, since I was so excited with the game, I just had to grab the mic from Bravo 6 and just take the lead from there. But again, thank you so much, casters, for doing such an amazing job in this series. But yes, we're finally here. The road was a little bit rocky, and it could have been a different situation. I feel like it could have been a game number five, especially since WDC free slot did get that hard point first in the beginning. But again, in that hard point number one that we saw in takeoff, they just dropped the spaghetti at the very end. And obviously, for Omega, they did take advantage of that. Drop the spaghetti. Drop the spaghetti. Before, before we head over to World Series, guys, coming again, another hard point will be won over for the set of smart Omega. And guess what? This time around, it's not going to be the DC leading the game at all or anything. It's actually just going to be smart Omega being smart Omega now. MVP for the game is going to be Idra for you, rocking and bagging 37 kills under his name, 5,093 points as well. The man finally put up a show, uh, you know, the spotlight onto him. Quite well deserved. Give it up now for your man, Idra, for side of Smart Omega. Yeah, for Idra doing such an amazing job, and I feel like it's such a good thing, such a refreshing thing to see to have a different team, a different player here for Smart Omega, but... I would just like to commend what happened in that last hill. I feel like the usage of the score streaks and the operator skills were so clutch mm -hmm. when it comes to Omega. They did such a good job at efficiently using it and eventually winning this hard point matchup here in Hacienda. So, again, valiant effort coming in from WDC Freesaw, though, doing such a dominating um, matchup here in SND. But as I'm saying this, let's take a look at what happened in this particular series. And we started things off in that hard point matchup in takeoff where it was a 250 and 243, where we keep saying it time and time again wdc free slot almost won it but omega clutched it up at the very end and later on here warden firing range seven and two is a completely different story I, if only if only wdc free slot was able to close down takeoff hard point i think everyone us uh, bravo six neptune and beef mammy and me would be smiling but you know it didn't happen smart omega they wanted to end it off quite quickly in a three and one matter as i would love to uh, say it is what it is smart omega they're gonna be finishing off third for this event wdc free slot uh fourth but now the the real battle begins it's gonna be the final showdown that's gonna be awaiting us right around the corner blacklist international ultimate up against almighty will be found in the next matchup i do believe we're gonna be having a short break so we'll be right back I'm Snoop Deal Double G, fool. The dog father always wins. <laughs> Thank you. 
again, baby. That was dope. No lie. I'm Snoop Deal Double G, fool. <laughs> the dog father always wins. <laughs> Thank you. 
good, baby. That was dope. No lie. I'm Snoop Deal Double G, fool. <laughs> the dog father always wins. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
good, baby. That was dope. No lie. Snoop deal double G, fool. It is now 9 p.m. in the Philippines and in Singapore, 8 p.m. in Thailand and in Indonesia. We want to welcome our viewers across Southeast Asia and around the world. Welcome. Yeah, and welcome. Uh, I think we lost a little bit from uh, Bravo 6 in terms of uh... cloud ports powered by Gush Cloud. Yeah. Take over. All right, so um, guys, apologies for the technical issues. Uh, I think Bravo6 is uh, losing a little bit of uh, audio from his end. And as Bravo6 is saying, welcome to the Gush Cloud Cup Invitationals. Uh, this event is powered by Gush Cloud Gaming and produced by PGE Sports in collaboration with Lenovo. Whether it's community event or official tournaments from Call of Duty Mobile to Valorant to Mobile Legends and many other games, you can count on PGE Sports to bring you the action with excellence. PGE Sports is the organization that executes high-quality esports event as well as provide a trusted and safe ecosystem to nurture esports talent from any or from an ordinary individual into an inspiring story. Get ready to take the world by storm with PG Esports. Join, join their scrimmage and tournament at their Discord, discord.gg slash PG Esports and follow their social, socials as well. This is a live stream being presented by PG Esports. So make sure that you yeah. give them a follow. As we wait for Bravo 6 Gaming Live right now, we are going to start off this uh, game and uh, so that I'll have someone to uh, talk to. I think Bravo 6 is back. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. I mean, that was really, really uh, quite the technical run. I mean, of course, we've been on the air for nine hours again. We want to welcome all our viewers in Southeast Asia and around the world. You're still in the situation room, still warming the seat right now. And if you would want to take advantage of the discounts or any other deals about Lenovo, we have special 
QR codes still up and still ready for you guys. Scan those codes for Singapore deals. Scan the code below Neptune. And for the Filipino deals, scan the code that's below me right now. If you're from Thailand and from Malaysia, of course, we still got these particular deal codes right there just below. Yeah. Probably that's going to be the first thing I will be doing after this entire broadcast is over. <laughs> Neptune. I think we got to get ourselves a lot of uh, a lot of a hardware upgrade. But Neptune, over to you for the brackets. Yeah, and we are going to see the brackets right now. I guess everyone who has been following us from earlier understand and knows what is going on. But in, just in case you don't, this what happened from that elimination. Almighty just went through towards semifinals up until the finals. And they are playing in onto that championship stage. And on to the other side, Blacklist International Ultimate. After the battle between, uh, against Smart Omega, they will be stepping in the champion and... What we've seen earlier is double DC free slot as well as Smart Omega, where Smart Omega just took that W. So, who's going to win that? Oh, uh, win this cup? Who will be the champions between Almighty and Blacklist International Ultimate? We'll have to find out in a bit. We're going to see the head to head as well as the snipers of the team. Bravo. Eagle eyes, eyes on the scope and eyes on the prize. Here we go. Two of the best snipers in Southeast Asia. We've got Heaven skyrocketing for Almighty. And we got Yobabs from Blacklist International Ultimate. Look at those stats right there. 57 to 42.33 for uh, both uh, average kills. 46 to 48 deaths. For uh, uh, 46 deaths for Heaven, 48 deaths for Yobabs from Blacklist, 19.5 assists coming in for uh, Heaven, and 13.67 on the side of Yobabs, 7,000 plus points up against 6,200 plus for Yobabs, and a higher KDA ratio definitely for Heaven. Heaven is Heaven for a reason, and definitely Heaven is has his place on Earth, but will Yobabs be able to try and break the code that Almighty's Heaven has always been playing out since the start of this particular tournament. We will see in the next few minutes. So I want to ask you briefly, Neptune, before we yep. toss out to two of the best casters of all time, your thoughts on this matchup as we head to the maps and modes. In the have ras roster change at this point, and I would say um, it's not really a roster change for mm -hmm. a Blacklist mm -hmm. Ultimate. It's more of what they had before. But as we look into the game that is going to unfold right now, it is the five maps that we had to offer. Summit, four hardpoint standoff for the Search and Destroy Hacienda for that control, and back to hardpoint. It will be final range as well as raid for that Search and Destroy. Slumps and takeoff being taken off from that list, and as as we see Sparrow and Annihilator out from this game, it might be a purifier as well as uh, the Gravity Vortex. Even the Claw is like giving out a de debut between all these teams. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Neptune. And that is proving to be quite, quite the mix of maps and modes, especially if we head over or if a situation for a uh, game four and a game five would happen. I mean, of course, we would want to see uh, these teams stretch it out into the end, but that will be selfish if you're uh, looking at it from a broadcast perspective. We have to take into consideration these players have been playing since 12 noon. So uh, we will be seeing how the fatigue factor is going to set in. Of course, both of these teams know their stuff. They know what it feels to be in such a championship caliber match. And here we go for that uh, maps and modes that was quite the uh, turnaround, Neptune. So I want to go back to that question I was supposed to ask you earlier. Some of your <laughs> thoughts, who do you think will be dominant and who do you think will take the crown before we toss it again to two of the best casters there are? Again, well, um, for Almighty, they've taken a win already in CDFI. They have huge potential, especially taking in Reef. And then the, come, uh, the return of Yato as well as Yobabs in here might bring in a little bit more of advantage for Blacklist Ultimate. Uh, it's still 50-50 at this point, Bravo 6. I really couldn't tell who's going to take that win. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell, and probably I won't be answering that question, but I know two who do. Let's toss it again to the best mother and son casting tandem <laughs> in all of Call of Duty Mobile. Beef Mommy, Warden, go and take it away. All right, we're taking it away. We're taking it away, and we're finally here. Our finals matchup.
We have been live for how many hours? 10 hours or so, and we finally Nine reach hours. it. And like what you said, actually, Bravo6, he mentioned it, that player fatigue is real. And with all of the, you know, hours that they've been playing match after match, it finally boils down into this situation. Best out of five, our first matchup is going to be in Hardpoint <coughs> Summit, where we don't know what's going to happen. Because for me, I feel like Almighty might have just a little bit of an edge warden. What do you think? I don't know, but wanting for sure, I don't think fatigue, I mean, it is truly going to be one factor here, but I know for a fact the adrenaline rush that's going to be running through the players of the teams here. Blacklist International Ultimate Almighty already on it now here, and looking like he won already going to end off to, looking like Almighty, they're on the lead, 39 to 0, Blacklist International Ultimate, they're on the trail. On the trail already, and Almighty seems like they're winning a lot of the gunfights, essential gunfights as well, and not just that, they also have control over here in P2, which is a recording that we catwalk, and 2F is already in control as well, zero already for Blacklist International, and 46 for Almighty, and every single one of these players of Almighty is doing such a good job at doing a solid hold, solid defense here in 2P2. I think it's just clicking well here for a set of Almighty to get the parameter players, to get the anchors, to get the influence instead of Hill, and looking like it's just going to stay in the same case here. Shut up, going to be anchoring for the team player three, player two. Going to go back around the parameter as well. And Blacklist and Trash from Ultimate really not showing the full capacity that they have to offer here. Not until now, but till then, the exchange of the gunfights really not going in their way at all. And it's just going to be them selling for the scrap time here. But on the rotation here on towards P3, looking like they're going to be able to back themselves up. But the question is coming again, especially if ever that hardpoint opens up. Can they hold their grounds? It's looking like Almighty, they have the heat burning up for them. And Irfan J with a really big Predator missile kill, taking out Our two of the players of Blacklist International. Yeah, Not just that, Irfan J yet again flushes out one more play that's gonna be Jabin. And there you go, they're finally gonna be able to go in for the retake in this hard point. Not just that, flip the spawns as well. My goodness, the recovery of this team, even though they didn't go in for that early rotate, that Pred missile, and also the help of Irfan J going into the back end, going in from Cable Car, was able to solidify that place into P3. 91 and 14 is the scoreline, and Almighty who just wants to end it right here, right now. We're only talking about P3 here, and if you know what, if we're gonna be talking about the old world format, if the momentum won't get shifted down, the game would have ended on towards P4 here. Almighty, they just really know how to rock the show here. Blacklist International Ultimate really having a hard time to put up a response. Is it gonna be a pinch that will try to come through? Absolutely yes, but is it gonna be able to put up enough impact? Absolutely not, because Almighty, they're just gonna bring that hill back to their side. They are not gonna give any leeway whatsoever, and guess what? Forcing Blacklist International Ultimate to head on to new that's exactly where they were at. Exactly the same case here for P3. They had the power positions, they had the factors, but the problem was they kept on losing their gunfights. And now let's see if they can actually get the gunfights going for that retake here in the P4, where Blacklist went in there for that early rotation. And Heaven was actually there at the spawn area, but then overwhelmed obviously by the amount of Blacklist international players right there. Yo, Bab, life. Not just that, loses the purifier as well when he goes in for that defense. And now we need to see Almighty go in for that pinch maneuver that we really love to see, especially in this hill. And looks like Blacklist finally finding their footing, getting a lot of points. It's just a little bit of a history uh, glimpse that I'm, I'm, re I'm remembering here because Blacklist International Ultimate, they were on the trail for like three consecutive hard points up, up against you, the West Point Mamba Lokings during the Masters 1. And they were able to really bring up the momentum here, especially on this P4. But looking like Almighty doesn't want the history to, to repeat itself, especially um, up against them. You know, the pride is all within them for this Coach Club Cup Invitationals. And uh, really, Blacklist International Ultimate, they're really having a hard time. No matter how much pressure, no matter how much effort they put up, Almighty is just doing it a much better take in in a percentage here. So soon enough, we're going to be heading to the rotation now back to P1. Blacklist International Ultimate, the big catch-up they have to do. And the catch-up is definitely in order because they need to go in there even though they went in for that early rotation. Almighty just time and time again goes in there very aggressively winning all the gunfights and going in there for the re-entry. And now with Skurd having that clock allows his teammates to go in there for the push. And as he's getting this power position as well, he's doing such a momentous job trying to get a lot of the points. And finally the comeback might actually ensue. But think about what we have over here. The score streaks as well as the operator skills are full and in order for Almighty.
Yeah, I mean, a lot of endurance, the Blacklist International Ultimate needs to hold on to, but I'm loving the play, loving the uh, influence, and loving the energy that they have been showing here on towards P1. Maybe not the latter stage here, as Almighty will get the break and set a hill. And keep in mind, we don't really expect, we shouldn't really expect a lot of investments here on towards P1, P2, that's my, that, that is where exactly where Almighty might go for those big investments here. So they have at least two operators as well available, two score sticks as well. And Blacklist International Ultimate is coming on to P2 too empty-handed here they don't have anything to offer big clash might be able to come through and it's going to be much more set for set of almighty despite the utilities 164 and 74 is the score line in favor of almighty right now in the it's going to be absolutely essential for blacklist if they want to get around with the points and try to catch up with everything that's been happening over oh. here and so far they do have a solid hold into that second floor in control room which is a big power position to get to try and see every single angle that you can actually get spawn to be right there but unfortunately blacklist they do lose essential gunfights over there and as shut up as well as jeff Rowe getting really big kills they do have a solid hold over here in p2 but guess who's going to be spawning off right behind them there's going to be three players and the rest of blacklist is actually going to be there with 20 seconds on the clock to play with but almighty looks like they want to just let go of that hill and go in for that early rotation in p3 i love the take the first set of almighty if you're going to be asking me how are you going to be able to take the spawns on towards p2 you would ask almighty especially shut up wrapping around their on towards a long but looking like it's not really going to matter here but you know it's going to be at least securing their spawn here on towards p3 with earth and j investing the three fire they will get denied first line in the here almighty really struggling big time here as they need to deal with two players here from this wrap and reef will pop, pop, pop off Spots on the second as well. Actually, he's on a four killing spree. Might be able to make it a fifth. Ten out of the equation. Predator Looking for some more. Predator missile flies through. And he's going to be able to find two more kills of his own. And Almighty just continuing to extend the lead for more. Eight more points away. And they're going to be on the 200 point mark. And there you go. Almighty doing such a beautiful job at holding that hill. And not just that. Four streaks and operator skills usage is just so key and on point. And now what they can do with 30 seconds left on the clock. You can actually just leave a few players here and have the rest of them rotate over into the next hill. Now everyone else from Blacklist International looking like they want to split the team as well. Sending half a team into P4 and some of them to actually go in there for the contest, which is a really big deal because they should not waste any of the points here. And unfortunately, the rest of Blacklist International, I mean, one teammate actually gets spawned off so, so far away. And now it's actually going to be spawned there yet again. And now the spawns are going to be flipped where Almighty is going to be spawning off of that key. That's a problem, you know, if you lose your gunfight in the process of your rotation to P3 to P4, you might end up spawning to the left side of the minimap, and that's exactly where you don't want to be in. But now, here we go, P4 opening up. Almighty, they only need 20 more points to cl close off this game. There's a Blacklist International Ultimate slowly but surely burning in the heat. Investments coming through as well. Skirt inside a hard point with the claw. Two players around the parameter. One player anchoring here for a long. And looking like Blacklist International Ultimate might be able to bounce and really get this money hill for their side. And this is exactly what they need. Yeah, this is the break that they needed. And Blacklist has a very solid hold here. And even though they didn't go in for that early rotation, I mean, yes, they did. But Hostile they did lose essential labs inbound. and made other parts of the teammates actually go spawn to the left side by P3. And now going into that, they're finally gaining a lot of points here, but they do have to go and rotate into P1 yet again. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I just love the effort here for set of Blacklist International Ultimate. It was basically a full 60 for them. Almighty was nowhere to be found. Not until now, only accumulating at least one point there on towards P1. But every little bit of point will truly matter now. Here we go, 232 to 165. Another money heal. That is what exactly what Blacklist International Ultimate is longing for. And it's going to be a hard call here, especially on towards P1. And a very open hill it is. Looking like Almighty will get the first initial influence instead of hill. 13 more points to claim. And it's going to be a wrap here for hard point of summit. But the game is not over. Not until it's over. It's never over till it's over, and that's what I love to say to my friends, and also when I'm casting, because if you read something for a little bit too long, a comeback is gonna into. We've seen it time and time again. We've seen it already for Omega, lots of times. We've seen it as well for WDC and uh, and ABC as well. Okay, going back into the game, going in for that first hardpoint, that was a very heavily contested spot. You know, glad to see that Blackness is finally getting a lot of that points down for that power position. to get rid of every single one of the teams, not just that, contesting the hill as well. Big points, points for him. And solo holding P1 is very important for the points that they need to come back. 
quite fortunate. The cavalry is there for a player for the set of Blacklist International Ultimate. Well allocated, but look at this. The hard point. Only one more point away, and Almighty gonna be able to steal this map out away from Blacklist International Ultimate. But look at the clearance here for this very hill. It's not even a fight that was put up here on towards P2. The rotations there was too fast for Blacklist International Ultimate. Almighty stealing the first game out of the series. My goodness, that was just a dominating yep. uh, performance by Almighty. They did everything right. And yes, even though sometimes they don't rotate early enough, they can still actually break the hill so well. They know how to position themselves so well. And now speaking of anchoring a certain position, let's bring back our anchors of the day, Bravo 6, Neptune. What are your thoughts? What are your takeaways here in this game? Well, uh, Beef, Mommy, and Warden, thank you so much. My first takeaway is... We almost thought we were going to see the most lost-sided game in this particular tournament. But Blacklist International Ultimate just wised up. But wising up isn't always enough. And sometimes the stories of comebacks don't always go into play. And that has been the case, especially after Almighty proved that we will hold and hold on to it for as long as we can. Your thoughts, Neptune? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, when we saw it earlier from the start, it was, I would agree, like it was not really looking good for Blacklist uh, International Ultimate, though it didn't end that well, but the catch up in the scores right now is not that much, but it's a little bit too late for them. Hopefully it is not for the best of five series that we have right now in, in this tournament. And as we look at the post day game breakdown, it is uh, the MVP Irfan J, the Clutch King himself, uh, taking that lead two minutes and seven seconds into the hill and 42 on this lays. A lot that can be offered by just one guy. It's not just him, but it's also Reef in here, and it just gives us a lot more of perspective on how um, thankful All Might is having Reef into play. I couldn't agree more. Look at the trend that we have been observing since 12 noon, uh, uh, Neptune. Mm -hmm. Reef playing Mr. Quality Minutes alongside Irfan J this time. I mean, look at his hill time. 2 minutes and 36 seconds coupled with 2 minutes and 7 seconds for Irfan J. That only proves to show that Almighty's keys to victory is to put Reef and be that literal and figurative great barrier to try and make sure that Almighty paints the hill to whatever color that they have. On the side of Blacklist International Ultimate, well, they really fought well. They fought hard. They were able to uh, still pull off really, really good plays, especially that last one coming in. But it just so happened that Almighty had really, really good objectives coming in from both Reef and from Earth and Jay. And speaking of MVPs, ladies and gentlemen, of course, who to think about? Then Earth yeah. and Jay from Almighty, 42 kills and close to 6,000 points. 5,964 to be exact, Neptune. Yeah, I mean, uh, that is one thing that a Clutch King, though there's really no potential of clutching, but this really shows us why he is in there having the title. He can bring out the slays, he can bring out the objectives as well. And as we review the result of the game after that first hard point, this course right now is a little bit too far, 189, but still. Kudos to Blacklist International Ultimate for getting back in there, reaching almost a 200 mark. But it is a little bit too late for them to catch up from that hard point and time if is on the essence. But another game mode where in time is of the essence will be Search and Destroy. Standoff will be their playing ground. And as we can see, attackers will be started off by Blacklist International Ultimate. This time they have uh, the hold of the pace, a chance for them to really start off the game hot or probably slow depending on how they want to take it but there you have it i mean it has been a long day already not only for us but also for these teams and hopefully the fatigue factor is not a fact that it's not a thing that would affect their gameplay and i'm pretty sure that they will be hyped up once they win or once both either one of these teams take a win in that search and destroy but those who are bringing the hype right now are our casters and mother and son <laughs> tandem beef mommy and warden please take it away we got the bomb. Uh, yes thank you so much Next Bravo 6, we're going straight into the game. We're finally here in Search and Destroy and Standoff, where 
It's gonna be a stalemate over here. A two-one-two mm. split. Two players coming into a, a very backside push here and back alley. The defense is good, but then Shada finally gets that kill. Overextends himself just a tiny bit, and Blacklist <laughs> down one person. Enemy but then Jabin having the, the response as well. A three v four situation now. Three v four situation. Blacklist International Ultimate back against the wall, but with Skurd evening things up. Takes down Jeff Pro out of the equation. Evening things up once more, but one thing here, bomb is dropped on towards Sandy, but on the process, Reef will take the pin out of this, on this A bomb side. Javen will get the refrag as well. It's just a back and forth, a ping pong battle, as you would love to say, oh, Beef McCoy. Mammy. And Javen will get the hit mark right there. Quite unfortunate. Heaven will live for another run. If only he got the connection, maybe till then, Skurd will be present in this equation now. Here we go, a 1v2 situation, bomb drop. Outside of gasolines, all down to El Capitan Jabin, what can you do? Well, with Jabin, he's in a very good spot to get that one person off a tractor. He's probably gonna get that information down, but then doesn't know that he's actually there. And he's gonna be in big trouble. There you go, Airfan J finishes the job. The and now, if you're gonna be Jabin, you have to be very careful when you're going into certain sites, checking your corners. And yes, he checked Enemy his corner, but unfortunately, tractor is definitely a hot spot of people waiting there in line just to Jenny go and find bomb. out if you're gonna be there. Okay, very good start coming in from Almighty and for Black is a different situation here, a little bit more of an aggressive push but the bomb carrier overly extends just a tiny bit but let's see if his teammates can go in there very well as heaven and reef gets the first three opening picks three for reef already and how is this gonna happen because there's only one person left here coming in from the side of blacklist and the 4k coming in from reef just showing everyone who's boss yeah this is the new kid on the block Yo, if y'all are gonna be questioning, is Reef a temporary player for instead of Almighty? Uh, let that let that play right there be the statement that he's gonna be in it for a stay. I, I best believe that if ever Almighty passed on Reef and just considering him as a, a temporary player, it's a miss out. Here we go. Game, round number three, opening up now. Blacklist International Ultimate that tried to play passively for the first round. Tried a different approach as well to the second, didn't matter. Just lost the one out. This time, passive play. Jabin, shut up. Finding the connection, shut up out of the play, Jeff Pro aggressively pushing here on towards the L wall, filling himself just a little bit too much as Kurt will get that refrag after he gets a kill there out away from Jabin. 4v3 situation, round still, much more side of first side of Blacklist, not until Almighty can push through and make some miracles. Over aggression coming in from Jeff Pro and he does get a life but he does get traded and now it's going to be a 4v3 situation in favor of Blacklist International and we see a really long wraparound coming in from AMT that's going to be heaven going into the back end right here in P2 hardpoint. That's going to be Warehouse. Oh, you can see, they're going to be in big trouble because bomb there you go spot. speaking of heaven gets that one pick Yato the bomb carriers going to be going down and now blacklist is in a really tough spot of trying to retrieve the bomb and also safely trying to get in speaking of you get to see it a lot of lives going down and re finally goes and ends the job for two of the players but yo babs with the response as well 1v1 situation and also with heaven line in sight oh no. had 1v1 being present here i know for a fact and we know for a fact that heaven knows the bomb was just dropped right around the l wall with Yobab's picking up the bomb information, he just knows that Yobab is going to be on the B bomb site. So clears out A. Yobab's the now sticking the plan. Once he gets one down, Heaven will get the connection clean, fast, like Thunder. And that's going to be another round for the side of Almighty. Heaven did such a, an amazing job at going in for the backstab, and there was no flank control whatsoever coming in from nice Blacklist, and that's why he was round. able to get that kill. And also, caught timing. He could have actually gotten Yobabs way earlier in this round, but he just had to look away and reposition. But it doesn't matter either way, because he does get that kill down three, and oh, already for Blacklist. And now, if you're Blacklist, right it's just like you need to find a way to respond to a sniper like Heaven and to a very aggressive player in the form of Reef. Yeah, I mean, uh, Reef has been just really overpowering Blacklist International Ultimate in certain moment, moments, especially on that round number two. He could be really the key factor once more on how this round could be cited for them. But they lose player number five out of the equation. Blacklist International Ultimate will get that opening break here on towards the bomb side. And for the first time now, they got the advantage here as they're going to be able to push through a 4v5 retake. Bomb has been Eric and Jay has a side of the tractor. 
but obviously he doesn't want to challenge that because just like that he can actually go down very easily. The numbers advantage not on their favor, but boom, they look at player number four. That's gonna be Yobabs going down. Jeff Pro in heaven again with the flag. Tries to go in there for the shots, but Tin as well gets a really good sight line off of Reef. But Heaven yet again keeps going back and forth, back and forth, a 1v2 situation. Now Jeff Pro with the switchblade in hand, not really the best of weapons to go in for the long range engagements. Need to close up the gap and there it goes. Skirt finishes the job as well. Lost that round. And finally it's a first round for Blacklist International. Some four rounds, but a round is a round now. And you know how Blacklist International Ultimate is quite similar to Omega. You know, they're really the they're really based the off in terms of how the momentum uh, is rocking for them. So that's gonna be them, you know. Slowly but build, slowly but slowly building up the heat as we kick things off here on towards round number five. Yo Babs with the god name will take down Jeff Pro out of the equation. Earth and J will even things up. He will take down Tin. A refrag will try to come true, but Earth and J denies. And he's still quite alive here in this inside this bomb site. J Ben El Capitan will whip out the CBR4. Will take down Earth and J. Heaven awaits him right around the corner. Ghost gonna go for the shot in. It's a one v 2 for him. But unfortunately, Jabin is just going to continue to go on a spree. Three kills under his name in the fifth round under the name of Blacklist International Ultimate. What a fast Enemy push coming in for Blacklist. Now that is what they needed. That aggressive blitz play Destroy going into that objective. alpha bomb site. Or if NJ actually applied a lot of pressure, but good thing for him, Jabin is there. Good thing for Blacklist. And now... Full man push actually going in from the back alley. And now that information finally finds through. But unfortunately for them, Heaven's there with the scope. Gets two. And now if you're going to be blacklist, you should probably stay back just a tiny bit. Because you know it's going to be very troublesome for them if they want to go and engage here yet again. But it seems like they still want to commit to this backside push. And uh, actually in the process, Kurt will take on Jeff Pro. Tin might be able the connection but it's a big challenge here especially up against a man like heaven but both ends just getting hit marks back and forth it's just the, uh, the storyline of the right tech amr sometimes has been one of the best weapons to watch out for but it does get those tendencies the 3v4 situation here blacklist they need to put up one more round to even things up pressure is on towards them but if ever they want to go for an execution actually the a bomb site it's really the most practical in my end here. I mean, a free plan for them. All they got to do is just hold their ground. And it's a little bit of, uh, a little bit too much to ask. I mean, we're talking about forward players from the side of Almighty. And we don't know exactly what they can offer in terms of retaking here. This is a possible and it is. It, it will truly be a 3v4 retake here. Beef now the bomb is finally going to be planted. And I'll play it for three for Blacklist. Uh, he's going to be positioned here in boxes. Bomb has been planted. Obviously, Heaven having that advantage yet again. Going in from top bakery. That's going to be really big. But there you go. The shots are going to be fired. And finally Last gets to switch down one more. Two players are going to go down. But then one man, Tan, goes in there for the resurrect as well. A 3v1 situation quickly turns into a 3 and 0. Oh. Three and two, but soon gonna be four and two for the side of Almighty Day. Chose that so well because Blacklist International, they try to go in for the blitz play, but unfortunately for them, Heaven was there to stop. And for me, he is the playmaker of that round because he was able to stop the push in two back alley all by himself. And that's allowed Almighty to go reposition and stop Blacklist. Because once Blacklist loses that momentum, that's where things go wrong for them. And finally, Yobabs gets that open. Yeah, I guess the opening pick there. Heaven out of the equation. Jabin will take the reef as well. Two key factors out away now for Almighty. And this could be the seventh round. Handed over for a set of Blacklist International Ultimate. Yado feeling quite aggressive here inside this bomb side. Quite fortunate for him. Jabin Yobev backing him up. And he's going to be able to get that finishing blow to get this round for the side of Blacklist International Ultimate. What a fast retake there. I mean, so far it's been Lost working for them, round, doing everything yet. that's Ready very up. fast because they know that Almighty likes to take their time, but Blacklist now knows that. And so if you're going to be Almighty, then you have to change it up just a little bit because now you're going to be that bomb Defend holder the where, the bomb. yes, you can also be aggressive, you can also dictate the pace of the game, Drag but out. now let's see if they're going to be doing that fast break going into Alpha as well, but looks like they are probably doing that, and now for Blacklist, they're just going to be waiting for that information. Let's see if they can be a little bit more passive in the defense and if it works out for them. The bomb has been planted. Passive not the answer here for Yado. He will take down Earth and Jay. Just going out in the mid lane. Spot down heaven as well. Skirt from the back end will confirm the kill. Reef aggressively pushing, dancing around. Oh my lord. He looks like
to lead four player four for blacklist international ultimate left alone and he's not gonna last for so long and just so you thought that the spotlight was in it for blacklist international ultimate reef decides to go aggressive as well just like yato in mid pushing down two barrels and just taking two players out from blacklist international ultimate Reef, you cheeky boy, I saw that. He brought out the boxing gloves. He wanted to do that and he smiled. And there you go, Javen gets that first opening pick. And now with the Kiara and Mentana, he can definitely have really good defense if they do decide to be in a little bit of pickle here. Good thing that he doesn't really engage. And now so far, there you go. The peak finally comes through. Reef gets one. Heaven gets one as well. And now Yato goes in there for the tray, but it's a 3v2 situation. As player number one coming from Almighty is going to be in a little bit of trouble. A little bit of trouble. Big time. Javen left alone in the 1v2. Makes it a 1v1. Good choice of weaponry. Whips out the 50 GS to take down Jeff Rowe. Now left alone player one, Almighty. Heaven for you. Who is the better sniper? Is it going to be Javen? Is it going to be Heaven? Jabin wants to get this kill, but the corner, the timing, how Heaven just plays around to check the corners, avoiding the casualty. This guy is insane. Jabin will get that kill, but the time was tall enough, enough for Almighty to secure the round. And just like that now, Almighty on the match point advantage. Heaven played so well when it comes to time management and just doing that distraction gameplay to come off a very well-rounded team. And now we are at a match point. Six and three, one more win. And also an advantage as well, because if they do win this round, all they need to do is win that control matchup to put them to a three and oh. And now from Blacklist, they need to go in very aggressively as well. And Jabin actually does that. But the bomb is finally gonna be planted, adding even more pressure for Blacklist. Pressure for Blacklist, not until now, but Heaven, take down Skirt out of the equation. Look at how aggressively playing, how aggressive Almighty's playing here on towards the A-bomb side. Finally, they do trample just a little bit now. Left alone player 2, Earth and Data Clutch King will not be able to make it play. 63, make it 64 oh, as Blacklist International Ultimate. They still live Lost for another run in the search and destroy Ready standoff. Up. Two more to force an overtime, Beef Mom. Yeah, two more, and we're looking for another overtime. It looks like every time we cast ward, it might actually be a close call, <laughs> right? And so now looking Yay. into our almighty match, obviously still have a bomb, but then Javen almost gets that kill. Calma. Big markers through the wall off the L wall, and now we get to see it. Very aggressively, Almighty is going to be pushing out, but also Blacklist International in there for the response as well. The aggressive, the retake is first kill. Yato follows up with Tin as well. Tin will get taken out by Heaven. Shut up, we're wrapping here from this Grannies. And he's going to be left alone in a 1v4 situation. Needs to deal with player four, and that's going to be Yobabs for you, just dancing around. He's going to go down. One more round for that overtime, and it's surely going to be happening. Boop. I mean, yeah, might as well end it this way, right? But Almighty needs to learn that. Destroy I feel like the they have to the slow it down just a bit because every time Blacklist is aggressive, they're just really good at being that aggressive team. And now we need to see Almighty get a pick first, slow it down. But good thing for them, Blacklist International is actually going to be slowing things down. But Javen gets that first oh pick off of Reef. Too fast the hands of this man, and now Yato as well. But it's a good thing Heaven is actually there for the trade. Great thing for Blacklist as International as well. One by one, they do drop like flies, and it's a 2v2 situation where they're both split. It's a 1v1 engagement for both of these teams. If you want, shut up. One more shot, one more kill for you to secure search and destroy. Whipping out the 50 GS, putting the pressure in for Yato. He's getting trailed. Yato on the prowl. But shut up, gets to turn around. Quick shot. What a shot. Almighty oh, securing search and destroy, denying overtime. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, shut up. Look at that awareness of this player. Not seeing where. Uh, was it Yo Babs or was it Yato? I was just so Yato. invested. It was, it was Yato. Yato. It was Yato going in there for an aggressive push, knowing very well that he's confident that he does have uh, an available weapon for him to go close range, but then shot up too fast with his hands with that sniper. But you know what? Let's hype this up. Let's hype this up even more and bring back our anchors. Gentlemen, Bravo6, give us your thoughts. <laughs> oh my goodness.
I mean, the turnaround that has been done in there, especially in the final moments against Yato, that was a, like pure gameplay. When we thought it might be going in for overtime, it has been a pattern and it has been showing in here, especially towards the end of uh, most of the search and destroy that we've seen, but this time not so much. Almighty really wants to end that game quickly and ended they did not so much in a quick uh, spree we're in it was a complete domination but i would go with that almighty has shown us that they are ready prepared for that next stage let's check out the post game breakdown right here bravo six mm, heaven scoring that beautiful 14 points right there and just below him is reef reef Proving to be the utility man through and through, supporting the mains for Almighty. Look at that, 14 and 12. Just two double-digit performances coming in from Heaven and from Reef. And Reef is probably going to be one that Almighty would want to sign up for good because he is performing. He is He's basically like a spice to a dish that you are eating. I just finished my dinner. I didn't have the liberty of time to really finish it because of the fast pace of the action. But on the other hand, you got Jabi and Yato still working their way out and finding ways to really score that play. But th that being said, it is a 2-0 situation. Um, Almighty is on the verge of winning this, but will Blacklist International be able to to do so and speaking of almighty here we go most valuable player of the game of course goes to the one and only heaven he has proven to be still quite the leader even after nine solid straight hours of being in this scenario remember they were the first match neptune yeah Indeed. I mean, uh, like Almighty right here from the start up until the end, they want to stay strong and they want to end it hard. And as we go in for review of what happened so far, pretty much it is looking fine, looking dandy for the Almighty team. And they are proving themselves the Almighty in this matchup 250 to 189 on that hard point and 75 and that search and destroy moving into that hacienda for control the kings of control might be ending it on a 3 and 0 that have yet to be seen but it is looking to be possible from this team well if i was on the side of both teams i would want to end the day because it's been really 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 long and uh, we were mentioning earlier at the beginning of this particular match about player fatigue but definitely these two still haven't got that fatigue because they are still up they're still up and they're still running for this particular matchup let's head into control with again the mother and son tandem for the ages warden and beef mommy over to you guys Ooh, all right. Thank you so much, Bravo Six and, and Neptune. What, what a game we've had, had so far, and Almighty, Almighty is up by two. It was a do or die for, for Blacklist and National to perform a reverse sweep to, to, to be the champions for Gush Cloud Cup Invitational. But we are moving on, on to the Hacienda Control. Finally, it's a it's really, really hard, hard game mode in this match. How huge it actually is. It surely is, yes. and it's hard, hard to win it. Can imagine that control? And you know, one thing about the storyline between Almighty, Blacklist, and Control is that we know for a fact the Almighty is the kings of control, but Blacklist did manage to take a game of control out of it from Almighty, so it is a possible possibility here. And with Blacklist and Trash Ultimate choosing this map out, maybe they really have something to offer here. So for the first phase of this control game mode, Blacklist and Trash Ultimate will long for a very sided upward uh, map push here and that might be leaning towards the B control point but unfortunately for them they're really losing their gone fight and it's just gonna be almighty on the driver's seat almighty gonna be ready to go in there for, for that defense but obviously for shut up gets one reef gets one for himself as well score line is gonna be still uh i mean lifeline rather it's gonna be 23 and 18 22 seconds left on the clock and blacklist is still struggling to get those points but tries to do get a side and up a bravo finally get that one pick of progress down but fortunately for them there's gonna be one player to stop all of that from happening 
Nice. Just so much bloody is getting dropped down. A lot of investments in terms of the lives. And it's not really looking too promising here for a set of Blacklist International Ultimate. Being control point halfway through the capture. 13 to 17 now. I mean, the life not too much significant here for a set of Almighty. But they are still on the lead. We're approaching to the remaining 11 lives here for the set of Blacklist International Ultimate. And guess what? The B control point is getting cleaned up. And this is really looking to be a very unwinnable round now for a set of Black Lives International Ultimate. Really scary for them as Almighty just feeling the groove here on the versus round number one. Two more seconds to go and it's going to be a wrap here for the first round. Yeah, and there you go. Solid round coming nice in from Almighty the using the defense to their advantage, not being able to push up for that much. But it's the defense on fences that was very impressive for me because they know very well that Bravo is definitely easier to go in cap. And now we're finally doing the switcheroo where Almighty is going to be in that beautiful attacking round. And now for Blacklist, they do have an advantage to take a one off of Almighty. They do have it. Now, I mean, just playing defense here after all, so you might have a better take here. One thing I really hate about playing in this map between Choker and Shen, the rotation just takes so long. And what's you, and there's a lot of chokeholds that you really have to watch out for, checking out a lot of corners. Really has to be a factor here for the set of the offense. I'm looking like Blacklist International Ultimate just having a little bit more of a better run here, playing defense. They're on that lead in terms of life count. Almighty struggling to better deciding on which control point they're going to be executing this one out. And looking like player four here, just judging by the intention of player four Reef, they might just set up for a spawn trap here, but they do lose their gunfights regardless. 21 to 25, Blacklist International Ultimate. They're on the lead, and with no sense of influence at all from the set of Almighty in either control point, this is looking to be a round one over by Blacklist International Ultimate already. I swear, control game in Hacienda is just so hard, and that's why we said it a while ago. Just like, yeah, yeah, we like Hacienda for uh, search and destroy and hardpoint, but not control, and this is the reason why it's so hard. It's so spacious that you're just running out of time, especially if you are on the attack, where it just ends up being a team deathmatch. 12 seconds left with A trying to be captured right now by Shut Up and one more player. That would be player number two. J going in for the backup as well. 12 seconds on the clock to try to stop the bleeding. Grief is actually going to be in a very important power position here in 2F. Our very important power position. Is it really going to matter now? I mean, five more seconds to go. We'll make it four. We need to see the influence from the set of Almighty. And looking like we're not going to be able to see that one now. Reef with a pure fire will be the saving grace, but it's not going to matter now. Last ditch effort here for the set of Almighty, which ended up getting eliminated. The last player yet. to get a foothold yeah. instead of Hill. That's going to be putting them down up a scratch in this scoreboard here. A one-to-one -one Blacklist International Ultimate. They're going to be able to put up the response. Here we go again. I mean, if you start off in defense, we keep saying it kind of like a broken record <laughs> that you ended game number five in defense as well. And Almighty has the advantage of ending the game possibly if it does reach a game number five. We already see how much these teams are actually struggling when it comes to the attack. And now we get to see uh, the power positions being taken already by Blacklist trying to get into that uh, a site really quickly and that's gonna be just one player but again there's it's just an open space that it's so hard to go and overtake but take a look at your map player number five it's going in for blacklist he's going in for that early rotation already as well as player number one for them to go in for that bravo site Type it down. We're capturing alpha just hope that they might be able to capitalize on this one, but Andre's roommate now. Javen with a pick fire will take on Reef out of the equation. He's on a five killing speed right now. Earth and Jay just await him right around the corner. And looking like Blacklist International Ultimate might be able to really steal an offensive round for them as they're basically halfway through a capture here on towards the A control point. A lot more influence as well here being shown in towards the B control point. And it's really putting Almighty in the question mark which one are they gonna settle for? And now Blacklist International Ultimate, they have diverted their attention here on towards the B control point. Point with the last player, player five for Almighty getting shut down here around the parameter. They have this leeway to get the capture and now. One player they gotta watch out for is Earth and Jay. He's gonna go for this wrap. We'll take down Skurd out of the equation. And the B control point will be put to stagnant once more as Almighty slowly but surely regaining their foothold. And there you go. B is almost going to be captured by just one single player. That's player number two. He does get stopped though. One tick of progress each is left coming in from Blacklist and looking like a very solid, aggressive round coming in from Blacklist being on the attack. And so far, so good. Having the Predator attention split inbound. is probably something that is working out for this team. And now as the Pred missed out from Javen, doesn't get anyone. That probably is a missed opportunity as Alpha <sighs> is finally going to be taken almost. Ooh. But then Heaven and Earth and Jay just goes and stops 
stop the push, and that could have been so big for them. Jeff Pro, big kills as well, gets rid of all the progress down here in Alpha. Oh, so close for the set of Blacklist International Ultimate, but they get denied. Almighty, really not making it easy at all. Hostile Jeff Pro in a very cheeky drone. spot, really make this play out. Till then, look at the lives. It's really down to the wire. Eight to nine, it is. It's all gonna come down to the kills now. I don't think it's gonna be the objective at all. Seven to seven now. A back and forth. Here we go. Who's gonna be able to get the final adjustment? Will be the detrimental factor to really win this round off. Is it gonna be Blacklist or is it gonna be Almighty? Five to five now. B control point has been captured. Left alone is gonna be A. And looking like Almighty as well. We'll be losing the uh, the gunfight along the process here. 3v5 situation, who is it gonna be? And looking like it's just gonna be much more sighted for the side of Blacklist International Ultimate. Left alone now, shut up with a sniper. Will not last for so long. Jabin will shut him down and Blacklist International Ultimate will be on that match point advantage. Oh my god. Blacklist International doing so well in that attacking round and it paid off. Going for both Bravo and Alpha, doing a split push. Almighty couldn't even come close in their attacking round. Looking so good right now for Blacklist to go in there for that win here in control. But let's take a look at what happened. It's going to be a, a beautiful A push coming in from Fences right now. So that's going to be a really important number. So Bravo, rather. And also another player is going to try to go inside for that Bravo push as well. But let's see down. what actually happens here. Almighty will be winning a little bit more of the casualty here, but it's not so significant now. But I'm loving the influence that they're showcasing here on towards Bravo as they have one quadrant out of way now. We're looking at three players from the set of Blacklist International Ultimate will be surrounding the parameter, playing security guard as Bravo 6 would say. 25 to 24. The deal has been done here. Blacklist International Ultimate will get the clearance here on towards the control point. Almighty, they really gotta try something different here because if not, they're just gonna go down one by one all over again, over and over again under the hands of Blacklist International Ultimate. Almighty looks so lost in this Hacienda control matchup where Blacklist did so well when it comes to the attack and now they're on the defense, so they do have an advantage. So they don't want to bring this to the game number five. They are in a very good advantage with the lives. Take a look at the lives. There's only one life in between them, which is going to be really big. If Almighty does try to win this one, especially if they're going in for the TDM, just the kills, just the deaths. And now they finally get a solid hold for both of these hard points. B is almost going to be caught up. And not, not just that, it's also going to be A as well. So this is going to be a really big deal. Blacklist is going for that Bravo push. And also, they actually are able to go in for the Bravo cleanup as well. Big kills mm, coming in for Blacklist, lead. stopping the bush, and it looks like a remake of actually what happened here in Blacklist in that final round. But look at this, a breakaway now for the set of Almighty will come true. They're leading by five lives, 15 alpha. to 10, as they get an A capture as well. Yato looking to even things up in terms of the life count with a pure fire, but Reef shuts him down. Turned into eight oh, now, Blacklist International board. Ultimate needs to hold on on towards the B control the point, as it is the last chance for them, one of the last chances there is for them to hold their ground. Five live remaining here and looking like we're going to be seeing a round number five as almighty. They get that break away. Two more lives remaining here. Heaven with a purifier putting them down by a mile. Almighty and Blacklist presents us round number five. Okay, so they get one attacking round, one defensive round, <laughs> and let's take a look at what happens here as Almighty is going to be on that defense for our final round. Round number five ensues, and this decides the fate. Is Almighty going to be crowned king, or will Blacklist take another map and possibly take this into a game number five? Tin goes in there very aggressively, going in for that A push, pure fire in hand as well, knowing that he might actually go in for that spawn control. Urban J going in there very aggressively. But unfortunately for him, Tin is there for the purified kill. Hostile predator has one kill so far. Big investments, not a lot of capitalization. Reef under his name as well. But in the process, the rest of his teammates losing the gun fights under the name of Jeff Pro, Earth and J as well. 22226. Almighty just waiting their vanilla gun fights here in Blacklist International Ultimate. Really having a hard time. Yo, about to go down under the hands of Shut Up. Dirt will get the refrag as well. But is it gonna matter? Look at the exchange here, Beef Mommy. It's just too much to be dealt with here for Blacklist International Ultimate. 19 to 24. They're both trying to do spawn traps on each other. So it's so funny. <laughs> Going in the back and forth, and Almighty so actually got a better artist. slice of that game. Shut up. 
very patiently with a purifier. 16 is the life count. No, make that 15 as Irfan J also brings out a purifier of his own. And now all the score streaks are going to come out. And now Blacklist actually has a little bit of an edge because they do have one more in hand. And also for Skirt, he also has deployed. a hunter killer drone to play with. Yeah, but the lives here, it's just ticked down away, out away from Blacklist International Ultimate. And if it's not going to be the life, it's truly going to be the time here. They either got to start getting those kills or start getting this influence inside the control points. 11 to 16 now, looking to be the priority for Blacklist International Ultimate. It's going to be that Bravo control point. But as we can see, Almighty has their life doubled it down. And they're going to be able to get the clearance out from right. Blacklist International Ultimate now. And as we can see, there's only five more seconds for it's us to present the champion for first cloud club cup invitational 2022 i present oh. you all zero, the no, champions no, no. almighty no 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 it's still zero seconds it's still very possible Enemy for black and international to go clutch us up with one one more Enemy life down. though let's see skirt is let's actually go, skirt. absolutely let's holding go, this up with his let's life go, yes one more kill go, is, he, is it possible for him to go and clutch this up 13 lives to one if he actually clutches this up this could have been the Woo! best let's game go, ever for him to control <laughs> match up and reap and stinks right. down with a boxing right. glove to the face and almighty takes this series into a beautiful three and oh wants to go out and end this very early Early. It has been a gruesome tournament, has been a very long one, but it doesn't matter for the kings right now of Garena. It's not even just the kings of Garena, the kings of CDFI as well, and the champion for your glush, uh, Gush Cloud Cup <laughs> Invitational. Oh my goodness, what a control matchup. Oh, wow. Reef, you cheeky boy. The newest boy in town is the baddest boy of almighty. How dare you? How dare you punch Kurt for the last kill? Wow! Salutes to you, salutes to you. But here we go, we got the championship banner for Almighty. Once again, congratulations to you all for winning Gush Cloud Cup Invitational 2022. Blacklist International Ultimate finish finishing off second. For the third spot, we got our Smart Omega WDC on fourth as well, and the rest will remain in history. Wow, guys! I know for a fact that me and Beef Mammy has been enjoying quite a lot. Neptune, Bravo 6, what about you all? How do you all feel? And what a good end to a day. And well, good end for Almighty because that was a 3 and all not so good. And probably it was a fatigue factor. Probably it's something else. But so far, I would, uh, I guess Bravo 6 would agree. Almighty has been running it up until this day good start for them and a good way for them to end most of the tournament that they jump into well talk about book ending a really really good day for call of duty mobile almighty with that sudden addition of reef into the roster shocking everyone and still delivering shockers even up until the last point we got shot up over there with uh, over 30 plus kills 35 kills to be exact and uh, just uh, near him is Irfan J Heaven, Reef, and Jeff Pro. But you got to give it also to the side of Blacklist International Ultimate. I mean, come on. That last match really showed that they are more than a capable opponent for a squad like Almighty. And it also proves to show that Almighty, all the doubters, all the haters got to be watching out for them, especially in, in 2023. It's their second um major i would say major title in a row and uh, mm -hmm. for you to close this year in a very 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 convincing manner it only proves to show they are the high exalted they are the most high the most revered team so far in this stage of call of duty mobile uh, and of course our most valuable player would have to be shut up and you better shut up because look at his performance. It's 35 kills for over 4,200 points. Whew, what a performance indeed coming from this guy. Yeah, indeed. I mean, it's not just a shout out, but the rest of the gang as well. The rest of the team as well has been showing up from the start of the day up until the end. And even from that final moment, when we thought that it was already over, um, teams are still fighting their way. But again, almighty, a strong force to be reckoned with. They'll, they will not be um, giving up 
a lot of those time and they just want to end it. Let's check out the maps and modes right now, a view of what happened throughout this series. As we can see, it is a 3 and 0. Oh. Again, hard point has been taken 250 to 189, 75 onto that search and destroy. And a very convincing control mode right here. The kings of control back at it again, 3v2. And this is a 3 and 0 series. Well, the Almighty literally brought out the Holy Trinity in that 3-0. That is really, really big. Coming in from the side of Almighty, your Gush Cloud Cup Invitational 2022 champions, and well-deservedly so. And it's been an honor to be able to uh, talk about it and to be able to cast it with you, Neptune, as well as the two others. But uh, we won't be going out just yet because we have yep. one final surprise for everyone, <laughs> and that is we will be uh, talking to the champions in a little while. But just before we begin that conversation, of course, you got to remember that this tournament, of course, is powered by Lenovo, one of the best tech companies in the world. And uh, the Legion series is what you should be looking at for if you want yep. to top tier performance from a gaming laptop. And here we go. If you want to check out the deals even at this late hour two minutes before 10 o'clock here in manila two minutes before nine o'clock in uh uh indonesia thailand. and in thailand yeah. yeah you gotta check out these codes right here these codes one last shot for these codes right here scan for singapore deals the code below neptune and the below me is the scanning for philippines deals and if you want to check out the deals for Thailand and for Malaysia do scan the codes right over there, just below our names right there. Scan the code below my name for Malaysia deals and scan the code below Neptune and yeah, just in uh, case, Thailand. Go yeah, ahead, go just ahead. Just in Neptune. case um, you missed those codes, the QR codes, you can check out the description of the live stream. You'll have the links there as well that will lead you to those deals. And like it, it's so well, Novo has collaborated with the PG Esports as well as Gush Cloud Gaming to bring us this action and also to bring us a lot more in terms of this competition. Power is one thing, one is a theme that we have in this tournament, power of Legion, power of Lenovo and power of the team, especially Almighty, who has taken once again a championship crown, a championship trophy to their name. We're just literally oh, waiting on Almighty to go. I can't stream. Uh, can't stream video. Video. Uh, and uh, we are still we definitely we up and alive in the morning. All all evening long, all day long, we've been waiting for these results. And you know what, Neptune? I am as stoked as you are to talk to these guys in a little bit. But I just want to also thank all of you guys who have been um, really, really supportive of this broadcast. I mean, uh, Beef Mommy said it best. It had its up and downs ups and downs and it has been quite the uh the ride for all of us but i hope that through our broadcast through our efforts we have been able to really really provide you quite the experience because i mean we all miss being in the same room together i mean yeah. this gives me a lot of garena masters 3 vibes and I'm, <laughs> I'm i'm pretty much sure that if this was offline dude i mean i could just imagine the roar the crowd and all that noise yeah, indeed. I mean, uh, I remember these guys like the, like they seems like uh, meek uh, players out there when you see them um, in real life, in person. But once they play, it shows the monster that they have in here, especially mm -hmm. in Battlefield. And we're just waiting for them to jump in right here, and uh, they are uh, going to talk to us a little bit in uh like in a few moments so for that we are just waiting for them though we've okay. seen them earlier winter cams and even in the game cam but this time like it will be a little bit personal right now because we are going to talk directly to the team of all my not quite sure if you're hearing that to the background but let's welcome the casters in here as well to join us as well as almighty in the scene all right, so finally, for the first time in nine hours, we will be in the same screen. <laughs> that is Hi. Neptune, Beef, Bobby, uh, Warden, and Gentleman Gaming. And hello and congratulations to your Gush Cloud Cup Invitational 2022 champions. We got Heaven, we got Earth and Jay, we got Jeff, Fro uh, Jeff Pro, and we got Shut Up Where's in Reef? the room. Where is Reef? Where's um, Reef? Oh, we don't Where's Reef? Where's the new boy? Where's the Reef? <laughs> I don't know where you go. 
We All right. Agree. While we're waiting, guys, uh, maybe the I should I should be asking you the most important question of the room or in the room is Reef going to become a permanent part of Almighty? Uh, for now we don't Not know. Sure. <laughs> Not sure yet because no. just temporarily replacing Incendio because Incendio oh. kept doing something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Dave with his girlfriend. <laughs> oh my goodness! Feel the beams uh, out he, there. He is though. <laughs> He's his girlfriend yeah. birthday. That's why. Just, just ahead, check please. his Twitter and you can yeah. basically see and also Facebook as well. He's uh, enjoying his beach life with his girlfriend right now. But for me, I just want to ask you guys one question. You have been on an absolute rampage when it comes to winning not only a season four regional qualifier, CDFI, and now you're going for Gush Cloud Cup Invitational as well. It looks like you're preparing yourself for stage five. And how do you feel like after winning all of those um, tournaments so far? Of course, we are happy. Fun, fun. Oh, no. I know what you're saying. Yeah, let me find you. Yeah, fun, bro. Fun. Say what you say. Question, bro. Don't even think that we would win, honestly. If you saw our Twitters during the before the CDFI, we didn't even think to go through. But eventually, we won, and we didn't know that we were that strong during the tournament. So, yeah, I'm happy about it. All right, that's good to hear. Thank you so much. I think it's going to be like a line, so I think yep. everyone else is going to be asking a question. So, Warden, go ahead. Um, I got a question for Incendio. Wait, no, never mind. Incendio, Incendio is not okay. Here. <laughs> 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 um, who do you think is going to win, Incendio or me? Kidding. Um, okay. Um, actually, you know what? I was actually going to ask uh, the, the same question with Bravo 6, Derek, because honestly, like with the performance that Reef was able to showcase earlier, I was really stating, you know, if ever Almighty, the Almighty Squad will pass on Reef, I think it's gonna be a big, um, a big of a, a little bit of a, you know, a missed shot right there. But in terms of percentage, let's say, how big of a percentage will Reef stay permanently for Almighty? One to one hundred. Depends 40, on whether I leave. We say forty, fifty. Yeah, uh, fifty. So fifty, fifty. Yeah. yeah fifty, fifty. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well. Or not. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> And actually, um, a following up question as well. Is it true that this is your going to be um, a heaven? This is going to be like your basically um, a last run for competitive Call of Duty Mobile for a while? Mm, I mean, it's high chance. High chance I'll retire after this year, but mm. uh, there's a there's a small chance that I might not. I might still I might be able to continue competing next year. Wow. So wow. it's not confirmed yet. Well. Best of wishes regardless. Thank you. That's it for me. Brother Neptune, yeah. what do you have in line? Well, I don't really have a question for the team. Uh, I guess all the questions has been laid off already. <laughs> and I've seen the performance for the team. But one thing I'm going to ask you guys is individually, one at a time, can you give a, like a message to your fans out there? I'm pretty sure a lot of fans and fan, uh, your fan base has grown so much because of the tournaments that you've been winning. So let's start off with Heaven. Mm, heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, what? Your I, message to the fans. Uh, to your fans. Thank you for supporting us. We will do you proud in stage five if we make it there. <laughs> oh, if no. we make it there. Well, well, looking forward to that. The, the cursed, and I think the curse has been broken. The cursed is from Jay out here. Message to your fans. Uh, we will win. We will win stage five if we. Ooh. Yeah, we make it there. <laughs> if we make it there, <laughs> we'll make it a point. Don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll try our best to keep you there. Please. <laughs> mm. All right, let's go around the room. Jeffro, your message to everyone else. Oh, your mic not on. Yeah, His mic's not. Uh, mic's not on though. So he's like, not listening. He's shy. He's shy. He's not really listening. He can't. He can't unmute. Okay, la, let me okay. first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you for supporting us. We don't expect we go through this far. But without you guys, we we can't go until this far. Thank you so much for the support. <laughs> Humble guy. Humble guy. <laughs> Humble. Humble guy indeed. Yeah, and uh, well, I guess uh, like unfortunate Jeff Bro will not be heard at this point. He can't unmute, but Bravo 6, take it away. All right, it has been a really, really great run, and it's been it's an honor and a pleasure to be able to talk to some of the best uh, Call of Duty Mobile players here in the Garena scene. Thank you once again to our team 
from Almighty. Congratulations. You just heard from our Thank 2022 you. Gush Cloud Cup Invitational Champions. That is Almighty. And I think that is also it. For all of us, a very, very big thanks to our mission control right there and to everyone in uh, Paramount Gaming Esports for this really, really awesome experience. My name is Bravo6, and uh, together with Beef Mommy, Warden, and Neptune the Gentleman Garcia, it has, it has been a really awesome night. Thank you very much, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm Snoop Deal Double G, fool. The dog father always wins. Baby, that was dope. No lie.
some Snoop Deal Double G, fool. The dog father always wins. Baby, that was dope. No lie.
some Snoop Deal Double G, fool. The dog father always wins. Baby, that was dope. No lie.
some Snoop Deal Double G, fool. The dog father always wins. Baby, that was dope. No lie.
I'm Snoop Deal Double G, fool. The dog father always wins. <laughs> Baby, that was dope. No lie.
I'm Snoop Deal Double G, fool. The dog father always wins. Thank you.